Hello friends! I'm in a different place, as you can see. I did move back to Salt Lake City, so I'm no longer in Flagstaff, Arizona. Today I wanted it to be a really chill video. This is the second part to my mental health series where we're going to be talking all about anxiety. And I've got myself a cup of coffee. And I just wanted to have a really chill chat with you guys about anxiety. So to get started, I wanted to discuss what exactly anxiety is and kind of like my own perspective or definition of what I think anxiety is. So the definition as far as Google goes, hold up one moment because you guys know that I like to use my phone to look that up. Definition of anxiety. Anxiety means a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. All right, so Siri is saying, basically it's when you're worried, you're uneasy, and another way to put that would be basically being in a state of stress. So obviously when you're stressed out, a lot of things can happen inside your body. Similar to the last episode that I made on depression, there are many things that happen over time if we continue to keep the body in a stressed out state. We obviously see people running into uh, stress-related illnesses. This also can lead to disease down the road if we're not getting our body back into a state of balance. So with this being said, I obviously made a video regarding depression. So if you haven't seen that one, I'll put a link in the description so you can go watch that as well because this is all going to be kind of like uh, obviously a series, but they're going to kind of build off of each other. So with depression, in a very low state of being, so you're very in a low vibration. Anxiety is a higher vibration than depression because we're not in a state of numbness like you often are when you're depressed. Anxiety is a state of unease and stress like the description said. And you're focusing too much on what's about to happen or what you think is going to happen in the future. Whereas depression is more so living in the past, you can think of anxiety as fear of the future. And the reason why I say this is because when you're worried about something, you're projecting what you think may happen or your fears out into the future that doesn't even exist. The present moment is all we have. There is no future and there is no past. So if you are present, truly present and grounded in the moment, you're not going to feel depressed and you're not going to feel anxious because you're present. And when you're present, that is where all of your power lies. If you're able to be fully present, you're able to feel through your emotions, you're able to be present with yourself, to hold a space for yourself, to process through these things, and then to find a resolution. And obviously that is where we're going to move to. When it comes to anxiety, the thing that has helped me the most getting um, myself into a more calm and peaceful state is number one, going to be meditation. And this doesn't have to be sitting down and closing your eyes and you know zenning out. This could be as simple as going on a walk in nature. You could be, you know, go outside, sit on your patio, spend some time with some animals, anywhere where you can kind of be in quiet. I like to say, sitting in silence without distractions. So try to avoid being on your phone, watching TV, or even having conversations with other people because you really want your energy and your focus to be on yourself. So once you're in that place, you're going to be able to face your fear or face the anxiety that's coming up. I want you to ask yourself questions like, what am I afraid is going to happen in the future? Because when you're facing these fears, you're going to realize that most of these things that you're stressing about and worrying about are really not even real. Like literally fear is just a projection of what we think is gonna happen and nine times out of 10, it doesn't happen. So facing the fear, look it in the face and say, why am I believing that this is even gonna happen? And once you get to that point, it's going to calm you down because it's no longer in the back of your mind scaring you. So that should completely eliminate your anxiety. But when we talk about things that are a little bit more severe, like panic attacks, this is something that I'm not as familiar with. I've only had maybe two panic attacks 
in my life and they weren't so crazy to the point where I had to be like hospitalized or anything like that. But what I did in the moment was obviously I was freaking out and having like this hyperventilation uh, situation and I was actually at work when this was happening. And what I had to do was go take some time to myself. So I went to the restroom and I had to just sit down and breathe because when you're in the moment of freaking out, your body is probably going to start breathing differently. And this is also something I touched on in the last video on depression. You will be able to tell based on your body and your body language, how you are feeling. So when you're anxious, you might be moving around. It's hard to focus. Your breathing starts to speed up. So what you want to do is slow the breath down and start to breathe in and out by nice long inhales and long exhales and focusing on a slow controlled exhale and doing this for about 10 seconds to a minute you will notice a huge difference in how you feel and your nervous system will start to slow down and calm down because of course when we're in this state of freaking out the body the nervous system is literally thinking that there is a situation of life or death and that's where you're putting yourself in that stress state of fight or flight or freeze and we don't want to be in this state because obviously that is where bad things happen like disease illness you know reactions because it's hard to respond to people when you're in a state of reaction and you're always stressed and freaking out and this is pretty much all i have to talk on or to touch on when it comes to anxiety because for me this one's a little bit more simple than the depression video and I wouldn't say that this is something this is not any less important than any other health problem or mental illness the thing is we need to bring more light to these situations and it helps to have guidance with these things it helps to have someone who's out there who can just give you some guidance because this is honestly what I wanted when I was going through my mental health stuff was just to have somebody there to support me who knew what the heck was going on with me and kind of give me tips and tricks that would really allow me to ground myself and believe that it wasn't going to happen forever, you know? Because when you're going through that stuff, you start to be like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen for... <coughs> Excuse me. You start to believe that it's going to happen forever. And, you know, you don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it helps to have, you know, videos, content, I mean, people on social media who can kind of inspire you. So I would recommend, especially if you're going through a lot, find people who can be there to support you and who aren't gonna give you crap for going through a hard time. Whether it be some people on YouTube or whatever, find and surround yourself with people who are more optimistic and positive and who can kind of give you the inspiration and the hope that you're going to get through it because you will and know that on the other side, you're going to be a much stronger person and you're gonna be able to help a lot of other people go through the same things. So that's all I have for this episode on anxiety. And if you guys have any questions, of course, let me know in the comments section below and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching, bye.